Hello, this is Rachel from Seven and All, and today I am bringing you a video which is going to be a compilation of all of our family's favorite math resources for pretty much every age of homeschool. It will be a little bit more heavily skewed toward the early years of math, but some of these can be used all the way through high school as well. Many of them are multi-age. And I hope that you really find some helpful resources in this. I'm going to be talking about a few favorite curriculums, a few favorite just manipulatives, games, resources, as well as online and screen-based resources. So you're going to get quite a variety here. Math does not have to be something that either we as homeschool parents or our kids dread in our homeschools. It's actually probably one of the most useful things that we study during our educational careers. So it's worth investing in, it's worth putting the time into and just noticing the magic and the mystery of math and wrapping our minds around it. So I'm gonna get started sharing some of my favorite resources to use. First up, play money. You can see that there, got coins, We've got dollar bills. I've got bills in different denominations. I just bought a set of US currency, play US currency on Amazon for a very good price. I'm going to try to leave all the useful links down below for all of these resources as much as I can. Um, but play money is an incredibly useful resource. You can use it for playing store, um, for modeling word problems and money based problems. Money is one of the most interesting applications of math, right? Um, and it's one that tends to engage our children very, very well. You can use coins or bills for skip counting by fives, by tens, um, and just really modeling how useful it is to understand numbers, how useful it is to understand what kind of change we should get back when we give a certain bill and the thing we wanted to buy cost a certain amount of money. So highly recommend getting a set of play money. Of course, you can also engage your children with using real money. We don't live in the US, um, so my children do get experience with our real local currency on an everyday basis, but I also wanted them to get familiar with US currency, and which is why I specifically bought US currency for our play money, our school money. Next favorite resource is pattern blocks. And these are ones that I know if I'm going to get these out for our math lesson, our math lesson is going to take an extra long time today. And that's okay. It's not about rushing through to the end. These are always so engaging. There are scripted and directed activities you can do with them. A lot of math curriculums incorporate these, but you can also just get these out for your kids to play with and to begin building their own patterns with their own designs. You can build symmetrical designs and practice symmetry, understanding symmetry. You can count sides. You can see how different shapes can become parts of other shapes. These are fun. There are lots of different options. You can, these are wooden. You can sometimes find them in plastic. I do recommend the wooden ones because they have a little bit more weight. They tend to stay in place and hold their position. Um, better because because of that extra weight. So I do recommend wooden pattern blocks if you can find those. Next up, math counters of any kind really at all. You will see probably almost every homeschool has some different variety of math counters. The ones I use the most often are these, which are, they were originally little bingo tiles um, from old, old bingo games that my mom had. <laughs> Um, so they are actually see-through, which sometimes it can be nice to have see-through counters if we're using our 100 number chart. Um, sometimes that can be nice. Sometimes you don't necessarily want see-through counters, but highly recommend having counters and I highly recommend having at least two colors because sometimes activities that you're doing with counters, you want to divide something into two groups. If you have three colors, you can do three groups. There are all sorts of fancy counters out there. Sometimes people get different themed ones for different themes that they're studying or different seasons. That's not really my style. I just, <laughs> I just go with these little bingo counters and we can pretty much do everything with them. Um, but whatever your style is, having these little, small, manipulative, physical counters are very helpful. I just mentioned 100 number charts, so I should mention this is one of my favorite resources is to have a 100 numbers chart and have it easily accessible. 
This is in our morning binder, which I keep right here on this shelf next to our school table. Always have a 100 number chart during the early math years. They come in very, very handy. This is one I printed off that I believe was part of a free download from The Good and the Beautiful, but there are countless free downloads of 100 number charts. Um, you can also get fancy ones that are like made of wood or really, really fancy and hands-on. You don't need a fancy one, you just need a 100 number chart, laminate it, keep it handy, keep it where your child is doing math. This is handy in the early years when they're still remembering left and right and which direction the numbers go. This is handy for practicing skip counting, for noticing the patterns that you can see when you see a block of 100 numbers like this. You will use this very, very regularly during you know the first couple years of homeschool. Highly recommend having one accessible um, whether you do opt for one on the wall, I kind of prefer one that's small enough that you can keep it with schoolwork and your child can have it, it right next to them. I do like that style the best. Another much loved manipulative that has stood the test of decades in my family's homeschool are the Math UC manipulatives. These are very, very famous in homeschool for good reason. Hundreds, tens, we've got our ones and then all the other numbers have their own color. These come with Math UC curriculum and they're coordinated with the curriculum. You mainly use them in primer and in alpha, maybe a little bit into beta, um, but these are fantastic in those levels. And we like Math UC curriculum in general, especially during the early years. It is a great hands-on, very concrete approach to really mastering what numbers are, what they mean, what their relationships are together. So um, we've loved these manipulatives and these are the type of manipulative that tend to be used for just playtime outside of math time as well. Um, for some reason, our kids have a habit of making cakes out of them, like layer cakes, using the hundred blocks and then the different colorful blocks as decorations. So that also works. Besides math, you see another one of my all-time favorite math curriculums, and you guys will not be surprised when I say this, is Math with Confidence. I've absolutely loved um, the interactiveness of this. This is a teacher-intensive program. It's not something where you're just handing a workbook to your child. It is teacher-intensive, but I feel like teacher-intensive programs during the first early years of math have a very high payoff later on. I do think that this is a season of math where you do wanna be very involved with your student, where you do really want to be seeing, are they grasping these concepts very well? Uh, can they interact with these concepts very well? So I have other videos where I go into all the perks and benefits and what you can expect from this curriculum. I'll try to link to those below. Now, I've just talked about a few things that are gonna fill up your cupboard and maybe cost some money. So I wanna talk about a free um, math resource, which is screen-based and on the internet, and one that I really, really enjoy, and that is the television show Number Blocks. You can find a lot of episodes of that on YouTube itself, and I've watched quite a few of them with my sons. They are always excited to watch Number Blocks. It's not like the kind of show where you're like, oh, you need to watch something educational and the kids like roll their eyes and aren't interested. It's a very engaging show. Um, but as I watch it, a lot of the times and when I see how numbers are arranging themselves or the relationships that are made between different numbers, I'm seeing, as an adult, I'm seeing the very clever things that they are showing about the features of these numbers about how certain numbers can make squares and <laughs> just the different features of these numbers that I'm like, oh, I see what you did there, number blocks, very clever. They are really building the foundation for future math ideas. Now, some of these clever features that are part of the number block show probably will go over your children's heads um, if they're very young and watching it. That's okay. <laughs> um, I don't, when my kids watch an educational show, I don't try to lean on that for learning. I don't try to expect mastery because of that, but I do think it's a great opportunity to just expose them to these ideas of numbers. They've got really fun songs in there. They've got little stories where they have to add numbers together to solve a problem or subtract them, multiply. So fantastic resource and free and on YouTube. Check out Number Blocks.
Okay, I've mentioned in the past that I am not the biggest fan of educational games. It's just not my preferred way to learn, but I do see their value uh, quite a bit as a teacher and as a homeschooler. So I do have a few game-ish resources to recommend that we've come to really like. One is the game Tiny Polka Dot. I first heard of this game from Rachel at My Homeschool Plan here on YouTube and I thought it seemed like brilliant. It also seemed small. It seemed like a low space commitment, so I got it. And what this game is, is it's several sets of cards that represent numbers in different ways. So we have the purple cards, which are representing <laughs> written numbers, our digits here. We have a set of 10 frames, 10 frame cards. We have some green cards with numbers of dots, but they're randomly scattered on the card. Then we have one that's arranged like traditional dice. Here, we've got the circles, circles with a certain number of dots orbiting around a circle. So you have different representations of all of these numbers. And then the game itself comes with a number of cards with different, more or less challenging games to play. We've played a number of these games but I also just use these as different types of flashcards, different ways of engaging with numbers for my children, for my youngest especially, who is still working on mastering his numbers. We'll also, I'll also use them for matching games, for subtraction games, and I think it's just a really great opportunity for children to be working on mastering, recognizing a number, even when it's represented in different ways. Really nicely designed game that can be a very effective tool and I love that it's in such a small package. Again, I will link it below. More on the topic of games. You can use any dice from any of your board games for a lot of different math drills and quick math games. Here is one of the many sided dice. Using 10 or 12 sided dice for homeschool games can be very ideal, especially when you're working on perhaps multiplication tables, because you can do just a quick drill with your child where you're rolling a dice and whatever table you're working on, say you're working on the six times table, you roll a four and you do, okay, what's six times four? You roll a nine, what's six times nine? And you can just really quickly drill multiplication tables at random through that. And that can just be one more varied way to practice the tables. Or maybe you do this with addition or subtraction, whatever skill you're working on with your child. Also, I'm sure you already have these, a good old deck of cards <laughs> in your home. Uh, decks of cards can be used for many, many games in the Math with Confidence curriculum. You are using a deck of cards <laughs> very frequently <laughs> for your math games. So there can be specific math games. You can also play classic traditional math games. Um, but I do recommend, because some of our decks of cards can be a little bit fancy, we have a Yellowstone set that has like pictures of waterfalls and beautiful pictures on them. I do recommend getting more of a classic set, especially when you're first playing with younger children so that they can visually see how nine is represented and how eight is represented with these little shapes. I do think that that helps make it a little bit more practical and a little bit more effective when you're using decks of cards for math with younger kids. Another resource that I've really come to appreciate with teaching math is math storybooks or math picture books at my kids' level. Um, and there are many resources. I'm gonna share with you a couple ideas on how to find them. Um, but one series I'll share right now is the Math Start series. They have books in level one, level two, level three, depending on what math concept they are covering. And you can find out right on the cover, what are they working on? Regrouping, time, dollars and cents. And this one is adding, adding on to a number. I also like that they have a number of these titles available in Spanish. And you can usually find these titles very inexpensively on thrift books or book outlet. I will link to those below. So this is a highly recommended series for me. We have a number of books in this series, some of which I have literally read 50 plus times. <laughs> My kids request them so much. So they do tend to have a good knack for picking topics or stories that are very, very engaging to kids. This one, um, Jacob, I think it's maybe called Jacob the Builder in English, is a, <laughs> is a very, uh, really engaging one, um, one that they really love.
So that's one series I recommend, but there are lots of great picture books, lots of great authors that you can look for for math related stories as a way to engage your children with seeing how math connects to other ideas and concepts. One suggestion that I have for finding math related picture books is actually to go to the blog posts on Kate Snow's website where she will have 30 plus book recommendations, 30 plus math books for kindergarten or for first grade or for second grade and look at her list. The lists that she created are the lists of books that she recommends in her curriculum, but you don't have to be using her curriculum to get benefit from those lists of books. They're really good, they're well curated lists. So I'll leave the blog post links so you can check those out. In the same vein of connecting math to stories, I also want to recommend the Life of Fred math series. Now this is a series that can be used with students from any age. They have elementary from the apples book that begins elementary all the way up to calculus and everything in between. They have middle school levels, high school levels. My sister who is a senior right now has done Life of Fred math through the entire series. My family owns the entire Life of Fred series from apples to calculus. So we can say yes, we have used these, we have very much enjoyed these. The upper level books in high school can be a little bit or a lot challenging and complex. So um, I recommend those more for um, if you yourself as a teacher are pretty math minded and pretty math confident, they might be a bit of a challenge to use if you or your students are not as confident in math to just try to jump into the high school levels. Um, but the earlier levels are more accessible. They are a lot of fun. Um, you will definitely find yourself reading them for the story. All of these stories are focused on a young math professor named Fred and his adventures and misadventures, his friends and other people he meets who are perhaps not quite so friendly. Um, and through each story, you are learning a math concept and getting opportunities to practice a math concept. In the elementary series of Life of Fred, there are just a few application problems so we tend to use it just as a supplement or as a read aloud during the early years. Um, but later on into mid middle and high school, there are actually quite a few application problems and practice problems. So it can be used as a complete curriculum in the upper grades. And one last resource I have to recommend to you is also free and online, it is Khan Academy. And we have never used Khan Academy as the spine of our homeschool instruction, although People definitely do and definitely can, especially in the older grades. We have used it when, based on the calculus concept we're learning about or the geometry concept we're learning about, we think, you know, I think it would be helpful to watch a video that explains this concept. And we've used Khan Academy to find very high quality, very well done videos that explain specific concepts and specific processes in math. So we have used it mo mainly in a targeted way to practice um, and learn and try to master specific difficult concepts, um, but it can definitely be used even more than that. And it could be used on a daily basis for a very significant part of your math education. So don't be sleeping on Khan Academy. Definitely check it out if you haven't been using that yet. All right, that is my compilation of our all-time favorite math resources. If you find this video helpful, please do give me a thumbs up. It helps out my channel a lot. And if you have a specific favorite math resource, curriculum, channel, um, whatever you are using, definitely leave those down in the comments below so that we can make the comments a, also a rich selection of resources for our homeschool community. I'll be seeing you next time for more nerdy homeschool videos. Bye! Thank you.